Yo, what's happening, YouTube? Heavy Metal Noise here. Wanted to make you a video. I've taken a couple of days off. There's been so much going on. Just got to recharge the batteries, you know? All the news that goes on in the world and uh, all the stuff in yours and my personal lives. I think you kind of get the drift. Just got to take a step back, unwind. Take a look around, enjoy the night skies once in a while, that type of stuff. But, I'm glad to be back after a couple of days, because I'm back doing what I enjoy doing. That's helping you guys, informing you guys of what's going on with our awesome silver. Nothing about this is depressing. I didn't take those days off because I was depressed, down and out, or anything like that. Just got to take a break every now and again. Kind of like a vacation from your job, you know what you mean? You know what I mean? I mean not like this is a job or nothing, I love it. We just got to take a pause every now and again, if that makes sense. But uh, How about we get into it? What are we looking at here? Looks like we got some cash and some silver. Some good silver, actually. Looking at a couple of 1987 American Silver Eagles. I got these before all the madness started happening in the markets and our medical crisis that we're going through. I looked these up today, $36.70 each. I think I picked these up for about $16.50, <laughs> if you can believe that. $16.50, maybe $17-ish. Because even before all the things went haywire, premiums on Eagles were like three and a half dollars. So I, it may have been roughly around 17 bucks, but it was it was nothing compared to today, you know. And of course, we got the magnificent, shiny as could be, Britannia's 2020. These coins don't ever get old. They're treated like they're generic rounds, but they're not. They're sovereign mint coins and they're... And you can usually get them, depending on what your spot price is. Of course, we'll get to it in just a second. But these are generally on the cheap. And so, I do have quite a bit of these. I like them. Nothing wrong with stacking some Sovereign Mint coins that there is an abundance of. If, especially if you can get them on the good level cheap. But, uh... And of course, we got a stack cash. As of right now, we're still using cash. Depending on who you ask, cash is still king. It is. We still have a big use for it, no matter how uh, how crazy the dark leaders up above us in the leadership positions deflate, inflate, corrupt it all up. You know, every term you can think of that goes behind a piece of paper with some money with some numbers on it. That's all it is. This? How about this today, huh? Unbelievable. Over $21 and still going up. It's kind of leveling out. It bounces around 5 to 10 cents I've seen throughout the morning. But I woke up and saw that over $21 and I think I woke up as $21.50. Maybe $21.43 if I remember it. And my job out, I mean, I almost rolled out of bed. Because I like to check and see what the morning markets are doing with the silver and gold. Even though I, I don't own hardly no gold whatsoever. But it's kind of an elastic effect, if you will. Gold tends to tag along its little brother, as they always like to call it. But that gold to silver ratio is coming down really quick. Silver's had enough of the nonsense. And so... Uh, give me a cup of coffee here. But yeah, silver's at a six-year high. 25% increase since the middle of June. Gold's at a nine-year high. Today, it, of course, I mean, I have a bunch of orders in. They take a while to get here, and I look forward to showing them all to you. But I placed a relatively, it's the biggest order I've ever placed for silver bullion. And, uh... I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. I hope you do anyway. Kind of a... More of a rarity... Type of a sovereign bullion coin, but... So... How about some news today, huh? Markets are up. 
they're skyrocketing. What news is out? I don't know. I actually really didn't dive too much into the stocks. But cause, because I'm always looking at silver the first thing in the mornings or so. And I like to see if they're going up, the market's got to be doing a little dancing around, right? Well, they were going straight up too. So I'll have to dive a little more into that. And uh, on a more serious note, I wanted to talk to you guys today. Uh, it's not a Debbie Downer. It's not, you know, trying to depress anyone or demotivate anything like that. It's just to give a, a little news, you know, of what's going on around us. Because you can't, you know, people may laugh at us, call us, you know, doom and gloomers, yada yada, whatever they like to call us. Uh, it's not that. It's just kind of a open, you know, use your ears, hear, but listen what's going on. Open your eyes, look, but, you know, don't just see. And, you know, take in what you're seeing going on around you. So... We have some hard times ahead of us, I truly do believe, uh, with all of the leadership positions. We don't have much leadership, if you, in my personal opinion. No matter what side you want to lean on politically, it doesn't matter. We haven't had a clean government, no matter what side it's on, and who knows how long. Who knows how long. Since before my time, I'd say the most... Honest, if you want to say honest, the cleanest pure politician we've had in the last long time, I would think would be JFK. What happened to him? Just too good. Too good to be true. Those, that leadership is uh, not going to allow things like that to happen. So, anyways, diving into this theory of uh, hard times ahead. I, it's not really a theory. I think you all know it think we're going to start seeing, uh, with all the news coming out, depending on what our leaders do, we're going to start seeing defaults on just about everything. You know, with the debt, personal, like domestically between people. Landlords are going to start struggling. The tenants are broke. So who's going to pay the landlord? How's the landlord going to make his payment? Theaters, depending on where you live, theaters are really struggling. A lot of shutdown. I know in my area, most places have resorted to using drive-in theaters, which is, I think, a brilliant idea. People like their movies, go to a drive-in theater, you get out, kind of the old school type of way, but indoor movie theaters are really struggling. Some have gone out of business, the smaller ones that you know you see on the old marquees that show maybe one or two or three movies every couple of weeks or so restaurants definitely restaurants folding like a deck of cards and it's a shame mom and pop shops are gone but you know them government bad boys up top they keep bailing out the big dogs funny how that works it's actually not funny it's sad how that works but and uh you know all of these things that i just named they're all going under no one's helping them. So that's just one thing of uh, be looking ahead to maybe adjust for. Maybe a tone for your, uh, a tone. Uh, prepare your wallets if you want to jump on some deals coming up. Unfortunately, the, I hate to always say this and I, when I do talk about upcoming disasters. Other, you know, I don't wish bad things upon good people, but it's going to happen. And those of us who are waiting... Sales are coming. People got to lose something. And uh, even the rich are going to lose. Don't get me wrong. A lot of those corrupt big boys are going to lose a lot. And they are right now. Just in different ways. Not like people, you know, that we see on our everyday life. But there's a lot going on behind closed doors. And that's why they're scrambling. Next, well, I mean, uh, we're talking banks. How about that? They're toast. People can't repay loans. People are taking loans just to buy their groceries, credit cards. So, if people can't repay the banks, the banks can't lend anymore. The banks rely on the Fed and the government to keep pumping stimulus to keep the banking system alive. And so, 
That one's pretty simple. That's just a domino effect. Everyday Joe's got to support their family somehow, and they're going to do whatever it takes to get the loaf of bread on the table for the kids, right? Well, if you got a decent, if you got any kind of a good relationship with your bank, you can take out a small loan, big loan, whatever. But the banks are going to dry out if uh, they can't get repaid. And if you can actually take out a loan and be responsible with it, and you have, you know, the income, just you needed an extra couple of bucks here and there. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Coffee here. And like I said, if you can responsibly take out a loan, you have the income, you just needed a couple of bucks. I mean, go ahead and take out your loan. The interest rates are super low right now. If it isn't going to hurt you in any way, do it. And it builds the, uh, build your relationship. You can actually benefit from taking loans out between your credit score rating. And it'll get you by until, you know, that income that you already know. Let me put that in quotations that you you better have a good source at it that it'll come into you to repay the bank. So you don't want to get in debt any more than you need. Keep it manageable. So our next point, the dollar went up in the last crisis, okay? Or back in 2008, the dollar index, the value of the dollar. You want The, the funny thing about this is, I've, I've said it before, where the dollar gets value is the confidence people have in it, okay? Which is what happened here in the last crisis that we faced. The Federal Reserve convinced everyone it's going to be all right. And so we have the reserve currency in the whole world. People use dollars everywhere. <clears throat> the story's a little bit different here in this time of, this time around. The dollar is going to fall this time. It already is. The index is down. I haven't looked at it as of this morning. Last time I reported to you was the last time I looked, and it was down by about eight basis points, which is not, oh my God, panic and run for the doors type of number, but it's a indicator. It's a bellwether. We've been on top for a long time, and now it's starting to come down. One of the big reasons, not only just the basis points, but it's all correlation with. Uh, this time around, the people aren't going to believe the Federal Reserve this time and all the gimmicks and sh the shams. How many excuses can you give the same people? And not, I mean, no offense, people like comfort levels and they don't want to. People are afraid of the unknown. So most people will force themselves and just buy into it in hopes that their life won't change well unfortunately it's going to hate to say it, but it's going to and for a lot of us it's going to change for the better those of you who are prepared with this yes it's gonna be the lifeline folks I'm telling you we'll be using this for toilet paper this is gonna be the lifeline put the roofs over our heads okay so back in our last, I mean, even the last, over the last whole lot of years, I don't remember, let's say back when, uh, gosh, I want to say Reagan, maybe even before then, I, and my numbers are uh, slipping my brain here, when we had a budget, the Federal Reserve had a budget sheet, balance sheet of $16 trillion, right? We couldn't even, we couldn't shrink that. When it was 16 trillion, we spent over 3 trillion in the banks in the last two months. What are we going to do when it gets to 30 trillion? How are they going to shrink it? They're not. It's not happening. We got off the gold standard, which limited the balance sheet, limited how much of this is floating around everywhere, gave it real value. Yeah. Nixon took it off. The monetary uh, system off of gold, which allowed the Fed to just explode its balance sheet to infinity. And the dollar gets weaker. The consumer prices skyrocket. It's probably my one of my number one analogies that I give you guys. Since the last time you talked to me and gone out shopping, what's your loaf of bread gone up? Have you looked? Have you looked at a receipt from a month ago? Maybe you got one laying around under your table or something, just forgot to throw it away? How much is your uh, loaf of bread from a month ago to when the last time you bought it? And you'll see that is a great, this is the most perfect uh, 
you know, the example right in front of your face of how much prices are changing. A gallon of milk, loaf of bread, things like that. The simples, the simple necessities. <clears throat> so on to a next day, uh, uh, next interesting fact. Back in 1940, believe it or not, people were in a better place. People were better off back then than they are today. There's just such a big smoke screen going on today that you wouldn't know it. You would, you, most people would look around like, are you crazy? People had a hard time even having a car back then. They would sell it for $100. Everyone's driving around cars. Everyone's got a home. Huh. Look at the smoke screen, people. Look around you. The car lots are piling up with inventory. People are fixing to lose their homes. Even people with forbearance are having a rough time are going to wonder how to start pick up the payments again. The housing market. Oh, my hell. Man. We're just talking the auto sector, and it's the biggest decimated one right now. This is the real world, people. You know, the TV is a filter. It is a, it's just a smoke screen. They want you to not panic. Okay? It's all rigged. Way ahead of time. It's a narrative for you to follow. And so, I mean, I just heard last night, Boeing is piling up airplanes of their Dreamliners out in the California desert, about a, I want to, Victorville. They have so much inventory, sales are down 50% from Boeing. No one is buying planes, no one's going anywhere. There, it's, I'm expecting big layoffs from Boeing. These are just bellwethers, folks. And this is going to be your key. This is going to be your lifeline. This is going to be gone. This is going to be worth so much money. You ain't going to be able to. There's, you can't explain it. Look what it's done in a couple of weeks. Okay. Back in 1940. Roughly the 40s. Early 40s. 39. People had savings. There were no unemployment benefits. Today, people are broke as could be. They're relying on the government to support them. And that's not everybody. That's not everybody, and that's not to be an insult to people. You, If you are on unemployment benefits, and even I have been, people who have paid into the system go out and make a you know an honest living and need the assistance, there's not a thing wrong with that. Okay, You put in your time, and even if you go back to work, it's going to be cut hours, maybe wage cuts, and so... I'm talking about those who have no interest in contributing, you know, whether it be a difference in generations, whatever the case, I think you get where I'm going with it. There are a lot of people out there who are getting paid to not work, who don't have any interest in working, whether the case may be manipulation, maybe they know how to cook the books, I don't know. But there are lazy people out there who just, oh, what? And even before a crisis happened, there, it's been going on. So, not to pick on anyone in particular. You're on UI benefits and you're actually in need of it. I have no problem with that. I've had it before and I still have it sometimes. So, nothing wrong with that. You pay into it. So, use it while it's there. <clears throat> but in the reality ways here, there's no way to remonetize these metals. Back to reality to hear what we're supposed to be talking about. There's so much money floating around in the in you know this world since we are the reserve currency. It's almost impossible to remonetize gold and silver. I mean the the deck cards has to fall. There's got to be real value placed on these and if if that is to happen you're going to see four-digit figures, if not bigger. Now, I don't think that's too far off in the distance. I really don't. <clears throat> There's no way to remonetize them in a meaningful way, if that makes sense. Because it's a, just an illusion. There's so much of this going around everywhere. It, you can't really... What we see today is just a guesstimate. What the markets are doing and predicting. Paper markets, it's bogus. And so, in all reality, gold should probably be $10,000 an ounce if it was honestly revalued. 
Silver would probably be at least two, three, maybe higher, depending on the demand for it, you know, in the industries and so forth. It, some people you talk to may are going to tell you that gold's going to surpass or gold. I mean, silver's going to surpass gold because we're going to mine it to extinct, extinction <clears throat> in industry. Und, industrial uses are going to demand it so much. And people like me and you, the prices are going to go so far up because of the demand. They're going to have to hand over a town to get an ounce out of us. So that's where that point's going. A meaningful re-evaluation. This will, you know, four digits. Gold will be five digits, if not more. So, like I said, depending on demand, it very well could just surpass gold. Because gold doesn't have that many uh, industrial uses. So, Hey guys, I hope y'all are having a good morning while you're uh, getting ready for your work. I want y'all to have a safe day. Enjoy your day. Get some sun. Every day we get is a gift. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Leave a comment down below. We can get a conversation going about uh, this video. Or even just whatever you want to talk about. You know, that's what we're here for. We're the silver community. And so I'm going to drink my cup of coffee. Get my blood pumping a bit and get heavy metal rocking if you know what i mean so like i said i appreciate y'all stopping by in your morning maybe you'll stop by a little later if you do thanks every single one of you are appreciated you stay safe and we will talk to you soon all right heavy metal noise out